Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and when you're watching this, welcome to a new vlog. The Goa series is done. So I've created a playlist. So if you want to go check out the entire collection again, would love that. And in case you're new to this channel, check out the Goa trip, the recent trip, and you would love it. So don't forget to check it out and subscribe. This was supposed to happen yesterday when we came last night, but it was we came here around 536. It was raining, so didn't feel like going. And the test center closes by 7. I'm getting tested for COVID again uh, after coming from the trip because that's what we want to do before and after so that my family is safe and I'm just heading there right now to get that it's a simple 15 minute task so we'll have the reports tomorrow so till such time I'll be uh, isolating myself in my room anyway we'll uh, finish the test and catch you guys in a while a few moments later hey guys so that place that uh, we went before the trip map my genome place it was uh, closed for lunch so came to Tenet here in Kondapur. Oh man, uh, the reason I'm having tears is they did uh, nose swab too. It was just two seconds, but it was slightly deeper. Hence the tears were normal. There are people in front of me who had tears too, but worth it. Tomorrow by 9 a.m. we'd get the results. If it's negative, I'll be the most revered person because I don't want my family to get affected because of my trips. Anyway, we'll catch you guys in a while. Uh, that was uh, yesterday when uh, I went for the test, right? It's been almost 18 hours since the test. While I was editing the video for the day four and five, the test results have come. Not detected. Feels so good, man. Now I can head out and uh, at least be close to my family. Catch you guys in a while. Actually, uh, need to head out to give the BMW for the uh, service. We'll catch you guys on the road. This is the order for the entire trip. We rode for 26 hours, 36 minutes. Break time was 146 hours, which is pointless because it's almost like four days of a break. Total order is 1641 kilometers. Consumption was 20.21 kmp, which is decent for a bike, for a big bike like this. Time to reset this. You see, this is the indication that the service is due. Almost 600 kilometers close to the actual uh, service interval, but all good. 9,300, very close to 10,000 guys. Looking forward to the first big milestone. Hope you guys enjoyed that uh, Goa series. Let me know what you think. My investment into the drone seems to be worthy because I'm getting a different perspective and that's always a point for me whenever I'm shooting videos. I want to see, get the content from as many different angles as possible. So in future rides, I might uh, not just talk why with my GoPro here, but I might have uh, GoPro at different locations. I used to do that on the street when it was easy because the bars were wide and there were positions to mount the camera. On this, it's slightly tricky, but we'll see. I like the Insta360 shots, but there is a problem with Insta360. It's just that the maximum record time is just uh, recording time is just one hour. So every time I have to reach out and stop, which is not easy when you're riding. It's kind of irritating for not just you, but for others in the group too. So I'll save Insta360 for special rides like that and when I have a long walk uh, like to that butterfly beach or to the waterfall that you saw anyway happy that I am uh, tested negative for COVID it was a risky trip especially during this time but we took all the precautions only downside is we have to stay in uh, high-end uh, hotels and resorts because that's where I'm comfortable living at a lot of people are traveling and staying in normal hotels it can be fine but it's just that I feel confident in the best hotel that because they don't want their brand reputation to go down with one or two cases so it's just an extra safety measure that we take since a big ride this year most probably to lay was cancelled because of this whole pandemic we're doing short rides five six day rides so in october we might do a five six day ride november december we're hoping to do such rides and i kind of like this five six day ride and it fits the budget too hopefully if we can get the good deals like we get for the taj agoda fort resort it costed us roughly around uh, 26,000 per person for all the five day four days so it is it included lunch dinner breakfast the stay and we were upgraded uh, to a premium suite and it was amazing the best experience in a Taj hotel that I had oh man love it we're now exploring other locations but need to check out the deals too right and it's been one year guys since I got the bike little longer than one year so perfect timing for the service the first service around 1000 is just a checkup service and uh, this is going to be the big service i'm expecting a bill around 12 13 000. let's hope it is in that range and not anything more i have no complaints with this bike so far in this first 10,000 kilometers it's holding up pretty well no rattles nothing anywhere it has been excellent so far and uh, one year ownership review will be done once the service is over so probably the next video could be that 
also today in the showroom there is uh, a special bike i saw it last night when uh, i met sriman and i'm looking forward to seeing that bike anyway we'll uh, catch you guys at the showroom oh by the way i was just noticing bag now that ba i'm back in hyderabad within one week like from september 1st the traffic scenario in hyderabad has drastically changed man the metro is open there's full on traffic like back to usual and uh, i would love that in an ev because the range goes up it would give me a range of at least 225 kilometers in traffic that would be the real test of that car so far it was just giving me around 175 on average uh, so in that sense this would be the real test and there is a software update due for that too that should happen next week but traffic 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 everywhere off the line Anyway, we'll catch you guys uh, at the showroom. Hey guys, here at the BMW showroom. Service is almost done, and uh, you see that bike behind me. We were on the Goa trip when this bike was launched here in uh, Hyderabad, and uh, oh man, it's a beauty. Sriman and I were here, and we started up, and oh man, I loved it. Let's actually see it in close-up, sir. Also, we have an interesting test ride coming up. Hey guys, so finally I'm on the F900 XR. This is the first test ride of this vehicle in Hyderabad. It was just uh, fortunate because I was in the showroom for my 850 and I was just checking with them. Did the test drive start? And they said they are available because it's a demo vehicle. Just uh, waiting for it to warm up to 65. That's what I do on any first start. Similar dash. It's 105 horsepower machine and almost uh, 95 nm of torque. Sounds similar to my 850, but my 850 is an off-road oriented motorcycle. This is a road oriented bike, and in that sense, there are a lot of differences. In fact, the ride height is much lower on this. The seat is similar. Rest all this part is pretty same. The windshield obviously changed mine, but this part is something that you would find new. The dash has an interesting blue color theme to it. Same menu options. Nothing new there. RPM indicator is nice. Let's go for a test drive now. Feels light actually. I think that extra 15 or 10 horsepower is clearly evident. And on this bike, I actually seem like I'm sitting quite tall. The 850, you sit in the middle of a small curve, and on this, I feel I'm sitting quite tall. And the suspension is on the harder side. This is the rebound adjustment. This is the preload. On the rebound, I'm setting it in di road mode. Dynamic would change based on the road conditions. So this is similar, very similar to what we have on the 850. So when I was in the market to buy the 850 last year, if this was around, I would have been very confused because this fits my needs more. I wanted a road focused adventure vehicle. Uh, sports tourer primarily and this would be perfect in that sense it looks very similar to the 850 in terms of experience which i like i like the dash i like the electronics i like the build of the bmw small windshield would definitely need an upgrade but uh, we'll get to see how this works out 
but that's an exclusive first drive in hyderabad for you guys steering damper included so this is the only version they have they have a standard and a pro standard uh, probably comes on order uh, there's a pro version you can add a few other things like an extra riding mode uh, for i think 30000 or something the version that comes here doesn't has only two riding modes road and rain you can get a dynamic pro uh, riding mode which is a good option to upgrade in case you're buying this bike and sounds slightly more refined than my 850 the best part about this is much more lower to the ground more powerful and probably more engaging we'll get to see in the first corner nice let me change the dash so you get to see this nice rev indicator so this is uh, the similar tft that you get on the s1000 rr uh, on the 850 the indicator colors are slightly different one thing I am immediately noticing is it feels lighter than the 850 quite a lot. Braking is good. BMW brakes are always good. Six gear may it was pulling up pretty well. I didn't need to change gears. Quick shifter hai. Gear shifting happened without me using the clutch. So that's good. There's a new bike. So got to be uh, pretty careful in terms of how we uh, accelerate and decelerate. Not going to cross 5000 RPM, but def it would easily do 100 km per hour in 5000 RPM. Suspension's pretty hard. I think uh, the damping is would change based on road conditions from road to rain. I think I would leave, leave it at road because I don't find much of a difference. Tires are new, so the grip is like literally fresh off the print. Oh, it does handle well, man. This leans much better than my 850, obviously, because this is much more leaner and slimmer than my bike. It looks and feels and rides like one. Oh, this would be fun in guts. Engine note is something that I am not a big fan of on the 850 and on this too. It is slightly refined, but over time, I think it would catch up to my 850 not so excited about it so this would fall under the price bracket of let's say the multi starter 950 the tiger 900 uh, gt not the rally pro rally pro is similar to my 850 gs on bad roads this is pretty fine on these bad bumps it's very sporty but not so hard that you can't go on bad bumps but definitely this is not a soft suspension it is tuned on the sportier side let's take this corner oh nice this is a fun bike dude especially in terms of handling this is right up there among the best bmws out there so in terms of long distance riding this might not be as comfortable as the 850 but this is focused for sport touring so occasional bad patches like in the city that we have should be fine and the maneuverability of this bike in traffic or on the highway should be fun look how it is easy it is to move around traffic so let's have the big question if i were in the market for a 15 lakh budget highest 15 lakh is the top end of my budget let's say and i'm looking for a touring bike my options are let's say the tiger gt the multi starter 950 and this one i think it's going to be a tricky choice because all three of them are unique in their in their own sense like uh, the tiger is well known for their reliability and smoothness of the engine and the multi starter 950 obviously the ducati brand a twin cylinder gets hot but much more powerful than this one maybe eight or nine bhp but the bmw probably handles two things better than uh, both those brands and that would be the handling and electronics in these two areas bmw is much better than those two bikes and i'm surprised how easy and manageable it is in the traffic it feels like a very small bike it doesn't feel like a 900 cc 105 horsepower and look how it is turning corners it's not getting hot at all i mean there is hardly any traffic that i faced but still these initial impressions of this bike are let's summarize the things that i like and things i don't like one i like how lean and uh, low to the ground this is it, you can feel it whenever you are turning this bike and uh, the handling is perfect bad roads decently better you saw that there right hardly felt a thing and third would be the brakes the brakes are decently good the bike can be improved but they're more than sufficient for a bike in this category on par or if not uh, better than uh, the other bikes that's it there you go 850 there and the f900 xr love this color 
and also you get this amazing build quality and design and bnw engineering things i don't like the engine noise the ride is on the stiffer side it's electronically adjustable but even uh, on the dynamic setting it was still hard so it's on the sportier side if that is something that you like definitely that would be a good thing tiger is much more on the softer side so it's a personal preference guys and finally design is subjective i'm not a big fan of this portion this feels like slightly outside it doesn't sit well with the overall design like this part it looks brilliant and overall as a package this is very good and it's priced around 13.5 or 14 lakhs which is pretty much on par with the competition if i have to pick between this and the tiger gt i think i would be very confused right now if i'm in the market i would probably pick the bmw because i've been a triumph owner and i wanted to try something new few things like the dash and the design and the brand wins me over the tiger you got to test drive both back to back and see guys time to return the bike back to them but i love this color man seems like my bike service is done so we'll get on the road and catch you guys back on my bike the service is done 9229 rupees that's a service bill ooh papaya orange fresh off the 900 uh, test ride you can see the 850 there is not hi all good thank you fresh off the test drive of the 900 immediately i can say that the exhaust note on the 900 is amazing here yeah. i can't hear the exhaust note on this all i hear is the engine noise this is an off-road oriented bike that's a sports tourer so much more road oriented bike and whenever corners like these come up that 900 wants to lean that's the best part of that bike handling and killer pricing man actually for a bmw you're getting it at 14 lakhs tiger is costing the same but it's the gt version not the gt pro which is not launched in india so very basic this has more features much more sportier to ride and also you get the bmw brand anyway done with the first 10,000 service they did a small software update i hope you enjoyed those r18 shots and also the uh, f900 xr first ride impressions man that's gonna be the first video from hyderabad if not in india Whew, feels exclusive cello we'll catch you guys uh, once i'm at home can you read this t-shirt name guess it in the comments just back home from the service actually i was thinking about the 900 xr test ride and i think i'm actually liking the sporty nature of that bike 850 felt much more comfortable so for touring i would probably pick 850 over the xr but if you are having only occasional bad stretches then i think uh, the xr would be much more fun bike 850 is much more comfortable for longer distances once you change the seat obviously because the seat is too hard both are quite unique and they have their own character uh, xr is much more road focused whereas the 850 is off-road focused i don't think there is any purpose for 750 gs anymore anyway so the service bill that was uh, one thing i wanted to update you guys so 9200 roughly uh, was the first 10,000 kilometer service bill. I'm assuming 20,000 would also be the same. Out of that, one thing I didn't get done at the BMW is the brake pads. I got them outside. The entire set got costed me 8,500 from Motor Washer. Go check that site. Quite a good site for uh, backing accessories. And I got EBC brake pads. Only the rear needed changing. Front would probably last another two, 3,000 kilometers. I was surprised with the rear because I hardly use rear. I use mostly the front. So in that sense, rear wore out much faster. Uh, out of the 9,200, this one costed me 1,400. So apparently some stone got stuck inside along with some dirt. So they couldn't remove uh, it uh, normally. So they had to use the hammer. Hence the screw was poor damaged so this is probably a one-off case usually it would not happen uh, like that and in that sense the bill would have actually been eight thousand rupees excluding the brake pads if you add brake pads worst case scenario ten thousand twelve thousand max so in that sense i think uh, for a ten thousand kilometer service if you change brake pads to the maximum bill front and rear both combined from outside ebc should do it you don't need bmw brakes uh, it would cost you probably fifteen thousand which is pretty damn good including labor taxes and everything i think i can run the front for another five thousand uh, most probably but still ebc brake pads are the way to go anyway that's it for today's video hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think in the comment section about 900 xr any questions related to that please leave in the comment section and i hope you enjoyed this video and if you're watching this tonight time have a good night take care bye bye